We have there the Bursa of the University, Mr. Jokun Kwanere. We have the acting Liberian, University Liberian, Mrs. Oriobo. We have here the Dean of Progressive Studies, Professor S. O. Oyewale. The Dean of Polas, College of Natural and Applied Sciences, Dr. Mrs. Daniel. We also have the Dean of Cosmos, the man that prayed for us, Professor Faye. The Dean of uh, Engineering is yet to be here. The Dean of Law, Professor Urifo The Dean of Kobe, Professor Asar. We also have the Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Taiwo Abinetan. We recognize the presence of other professors, Senate members, head of department, and every member of the academy that is here seated. You are all welcome. We want to recognize the fact that with our guest lecturer of today, you are all welcome. Friends of Ashiva, you are all welcome. The the Bali of the Nanda Kichi, Baba Babiche, is here to spend with us. You are welcome, sir. I want to recognize the men of God that are here sitting with us, representing the Bishop of Oudas, Anglican Company, is is venerable Kofolafe. You are welcome, sir. So also we have Reverend, the Right Reverend Dr. G. Olu Ashokon. You are welcome, sir. We have the Correctional Officer here seated with us. You are welcome, sir. We have the Rosetti, the Civil Defense, all members, you are all welcome to our army. We want to recognize the presence of uh, Mr. Chief Honorable Adeneko. Honorable Adeneko, you are welcome, sir. We also want to recognize the presence of the Amalek Council. Please. Wherever you are, please press on for recognition. You are welcome, sir. We recognize every one of us that are here today. Later, we will get to mention your name when we have the list. And we welcome you to this occasion and we pray that God Almighty will grant us peace throughout this occasion in Jesus' name. It is my pleasure the next thing on the agenda is for the chairman's opening speech. While we are still waiting, let me read out some of the names that I have here as uh, our guest, we have engineer Okodua Dauda, 
you are here, sit there, please, sit there, please. Please, you are welcome. Representing the President of Korea, Engineer Professor Emmanuel Adugo, Vice Chancellor at the University, Council Member. Engineer Dr. Pez, Asifu Asi Lua, Deputy Rector at the State Polytechnic. You are welcome, sir. Engineer Professor Ade Gonyi Ubiagi, past chairman of Kuren, you are welcome, sir. Engineer Benjamin Uzo Bule, immediate past chairman of NSC Warren Brown, you are welcome, sir. Engineer Marcel Aboja, Chief Executive Officer. Boja, you are welcome, sir. Engineer Exo Mayo. Engineer Exo Mayo, you are welcome, sir. Engineer Dr. Myers Adoyi, you are welcome. Director of Engineering of uh, Mr. Director of Engineering Korea. You are welcome, sir. So as we have the list, we'll be calling the name. Uh, it's now my pleasure to invite. You are welcome, sir. That's the register of the MLS Council. You are welcome, sir. It is now my pleasure to call the, on the chairman of this occasion, in person of Professor S. O. Aji, to give his opening speech.
this is a to this interesting lecture as I as I invite the next commissioner to that we have the citation of these important guests of ours today. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the writing to The next thing on the agenda here is the citation of the guest lecturer. It is my pleasure to call upon Dr. Mrs. Femi Olaleye to give the citation of engineer Professor Joseph the Pofin. Articles, 28 
conference proceeding papers, pre presentations, four papers presented on behalf of foreign president, three technical reports, two monographs, nine books for reading and teaching, six contributed chapters in books, three invention patterns from researches in the capital, he has edited and co edited 52 conference papers. Professor Odukure enjoys fishing, cow dairy, and poultry farming, and also meditating on the world. He is currently on full time employment as a professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering in the Federal University of Technology, Mina. Engineer Professor Joseph Obofodio Odukure is married and blessed with four children. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you an erudite, accomplished scholar, Professor Joseph Obogo Odigo, FAIF, Society detects the necessity 
for specialized products and therefore the necessity to depend on each other to find solutions. Man invented many things. Unfortunately, we have to reinvent ourselves each day to understand that we, we need something better to take us to the next day because each day comes with its own problem. Today we are in the fourth uh, revolution, the IT, the information, communication technology, artificial intelligence, internet of things, technology age. The old experience we have might not be good enough tomorrow. Therefore, we are looking at the possibilities we have to comprehend the evolving new order, the new way of doing things. And if we don't, we become slaves. We become job seekers. We become people who have no direction. Those who have will lead us. And if we refuse to understand that certainty is not enough, then definitely we are preparing ourselves for the job market where we will be employed. But if we understand that there is something higher than the paper you are given and certificates, then definitely you become an employer of labor because you create the painting others to use to find things for themselves. Excellence and relevance are not entirely by any work skills and proficiency. No matter how good you are, something defines you. That is the spirit character, the spirit with which you do everything. The understanding, the love, the long suffering, the patience, the faith you use to cultivate the process you are in. Uh, students, I want to tell you this is very important. And students, I want to tell you this is very important. Because you will run through life if you fail to understand that you are a spirit and you need greater force to help you to reveal who you are to yourself every day. You need to understand that you are bigger than where you are today so that you can go further. In other words, we've been looking a lot on why we have faith, humility. We've been looking at our integrity, to what extent can we actually develop the type of integrity required to move further, to appreciate things better. People are looking for who to enslave. People are looking for who to serve them. But fortunately, those who understand that they are better than where they are today, we always ask questions. We always want to know how we should move forward. We'll be patient enough. We have, we keep it up, a form of integrity that defines them. Because your personality is what matters. Not the certificate, not the department you are graduating from today. The pro chancellor of this university is a lawyer. And ordinarily, you won't expect, expect a lawyer to do most of the things he's going to do. His law was a principle. The courses he learned were principles. And principles don't understand specialization. They understand skill. They understand what you pour out of you to drive the vision, to drive the purpose that you live with. So we need to understand that if you want to create the appearance we desire tomorrow, then people will be ready to tell the type of quality skills that we have. And the quality skills will always be defined by the character we pour to define those, you know, those, those skills that we have. So I want to appreciate the students. I want to tell you that nothing good comes because we love it. We need to love what we do, but at the same time, we need to understand the sacrifice. Hard time. The hard time is the soil on which we base your love. If you have hard time, please enjoy it. Because it's that hard time that will define you. It's that hard time that will define your character. Hard times are opportunities. And that's why today, in the COVID era that we are in, we seem to be complaining a lot. But at the same time, we have people who are in, who are in the IT, the Zoom, the various platform of mass you know, this, you know, distribution of information, the Facebook, who has smiling. Their capital has almost tripled during this one year. 
Why? Because they saw the vision. They understood the time. They understood by learning the time, the season that will come. And today they are all smiling the book to the bank. Facebook has become one of the richest persons. Uh, the owner of Tesla has also become one of the greatest personalities we have. Why? Because they understood that time will be defined by technology. They understand that if we need to change the, 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 the place we are today, if we need to change our specialization, we need the fourth revolution intelligence that is based on artificial intelligence, that is based on ICT, that is based on internet of things. And that's why when I walk through the engineering laboratories today, I told the VC, I appreciate your focus. The focus is electricity, soft chips. The focus is artificial intelligence. And if we fail to get that, then definitely there is problem. I want to give you a few statistics of the serious problem we are in as a nation. The United Nations gave us 17 sustainable development goals. And those goals are not goals that we want to see. Poverty, you know, zero, they want to see zero hunger, good health for all by 2030. They want to see a people playing energy, industrial revolution, infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, climate actions, 17 goals. And these goals, they set the target for 30, 2030. Unfortunately, let's look at what we have today. 39% of the world population do not have safe drinking water. That's about 2.6 billion people. In Nigeria, we don't talk of clean drinking water. We have bubbles. And not everybody can afford bubbles. In other words, majority, more than 50-60% of Nigerians don't have access to clean drinking water. 35% do not have improved sanitation. That's about 2.3 billion. Use, in Nigeria, we use big toilets. Outdoor toilets. Why? Because that's what we are used to. I used to have a friend who believed that he must enter the bush, otherwise he doesn't appreciate going to toilets inside the house. That's the type of culture we have developed for ourselves, the culture of poverty, the culture of mentality. 24% of the world population, that is about 1.6 people, do not have access to electricity. Nigeria, the dollar is about 490 naira. And how many people earn a dollar a day? In other words, we have close to 60% of our nation people who don't have, who live below the poverty line. All the problems listed, they are daunting problems. But at the same time, they are challenges. They are challenges that if we, on our own, can only cite a thing and not a thing, reshape ourselves. Refuse to be the person we are, the, the, the person with one skill, the person void of technology, the person void of understanding, to appreciate that life is multi layered, life is multi faceted. You can't progress if you don't have different skills to enable you to improve on what you call your professionalism, your profession. Then definitely you are going to find it extremely difficult. As I come today, I want to tell you. Understand one thing, you must change the fact, the mentality that you graduated from a particular department. See yourself as graduating from all the courses in Achievers University and outside. If you, if you have that understanding, then the lawyer will understand he has to be technology compliant. He has to understand that he, 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 he can speak the engineering language, he's not an expert of course, and just as the, the engineer must understand that he's a psychologist, he's a philosopher. An engineer must understand that he is more than an engineer. He has to understand governments. He has to understand history. He, ha he has to appreciate what is meant by appearance. All of us, do. we need to appreciate all these things because we can only profit, make sense out of what we are doing if we understand what the other person is doing and refuse to live in silence. Today we have various platforms. Various platforms. You can't say you don't have opportunity. Your hands set goes a lot. They can't set to use. The concept has a lot of information. You can easily browse and get yourself acquainted with all the possibilities that you have. 
to become a very good person. And it does not present a person that understands the times. The revolution started way back around 1917 when we had the first revolution, industrial revolution. And then it was the era of steel, vehicles, production line driven by water and steel. The second revolution came, and we're talking of division of labor, electricity, energy. And of course, it was the time we had that started this continuous production line. So things become a little bit cheaper because of the mass production. Then we have the third industrial revolution, which was the electronic air era. A little bit of automation. But today, we are in a different era altogether. This is the fourth industrial revolution. And it encompasses all areas of human life. In other words, we can't live in isolation any longer. It's an area that will witness serious disruption of who we are as a person. Serious disruption. Climate change is there. COVID is there. Uh, we have a lot of things that today defines who is developed and who is developing. Those who invest in research will make the difference. Those who invest in knowing what, how things will change. The scripture says understanding the seasons and the time. If we don't understand that we are in a new era, then definitely the industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, we make us slaves. It will make us safe. We are in the face when many can sense just trying to understand what is X and what is Y. We are in an age where we have to interpret X relative to the government, relative to the nature of the people we are in, relative to the psychology, to professionalism and security. In other words, we are looking at ourselves as you have to understand the security system around you. You know, today, COVID has actually brought out the, the whole garment of evil that we have in Nigeria. Kidnapping, insecurity have become the product of the day because we have neglected one very serious point in our educational system. We have produced people who have certificates for contact skill. We have produced people today who are out looking for jobs. Unfortunately, these are problems. Education has to change, and government policy has to change. And we must change ourselves. We must change ourselves if we want to do well. It does not matter the certificate you have today. What matters is the desire to reinvent self, to invent and reinvent self in the new realities. The possibility of creating business is high, it's higher than we can imagine. In other words, if you want to catch in in those, those statistics I read earlier of no electricity, no big toilet, no uh, water, no suitable no, uh, big no toilet, no hope, and the entire gamut of deficiencies that we have, it simply means you are trying to reinvent and create a new business order for yourself. As you write down, look at this. Look at those possibilities. Look at what you can do. Stop saying the society is difficult, it's bad, definitely it's going to be bad. In fact, it will be worse. The only people who will look at those things later, this is the project of our nation. And we see that we are a great problem. And the problem can only be solved if we change the way we think. We need new concepts. We need new way of doing things. The educational system has to change. People have to look at better ways of doing things. We have to look at better ways of doing things. Students and graduates must appreciate, must appreciate that their future depends largely on their appreciation of the limitedness of the educational institution and more on their personal drive for greater understanding to embark on life non learning in order to remove the pain in the sea, and very importantly, taking God along to generate space and belief in the character we want to see. So what are we talking What are the type of disruptions we are going to see? The first generation, as I said, will come with a lot of paradigm shift, a complete shift 
in the way we do things. It becomes a digital revolution. It shifts in such a digitalization we be the bedrock of every specialization. We cannot do without IT in the new era of engine. We cannot do without digitalization. In other words, uh, education must entail digitalization. The government policy, the industrial culture, the home culture, the type of structure that we have. We have to find a way to use them as soon to be entrepreneurs based on the digital age. The people I mentioned earlier in Zoom, they don't do anything more than you being attracted to their platform and you become an instrument of advertisement. Each time you say Facebook has load more than a billion people, it means that a few percentage of those people we want them to create visibility. And for them to create visibility, they have to pay Facebook so that they expand the outage that they have. In other words, if I, as a person, did not pay Facebook, I don't have access to more than maybe about uh, 500 other people. If I want to increase my reach, in other words, what I want to post in Facebook, I want it to get to 10,000 people, I have to pay Facebook a certain amount of money in a limited time. For you to increase your visibility in the digital age, you need to pay. And that's where they lose their money from. In their adults, we need to look at all these things. You can, it does not matter because you are available. What matters is your understanding to know that you can complement what you are lacking with what somebody else and try to bring them together to promote what you want. Imagine that one of you require multidisciplinary role and responsibility. Fortunately, we are not taught many of these things. The university has not completely reformed the way the curriculum is structured. And that's why we in Korean we are looking at all this and we are preaching it. Lifelong learning remains the bedrock of you bringing out the potential to you. You must be very focused you must look at those possibilities that you have with you. Your concept still remains one of your friends. It is not a place you do all type of things you do now. Yesterday consciousness is not good enough for today. Yesterday idea is not good enough for today. Tomorrow ideas is a digital one. And those who digitalize their thinking will definitely make the way for themselves and be better administrators, better scientists, better marketers, better, uh, better practitioners, better sociologists. So we want to invite you as much as we can as you are going as a priority understanding basic So We briefly look at why we don't we don't have option. And that is what we want to look why we want to look at the Nigerian economy. The road is soft. The future is not going to be easy. The future is not going to be easy, particularly for the new graduates that are here today. The Nigerian economy cannot sustain the over 100 million people that are inhabiting Nigeria today. The crude oil we depend on cannot sustain us. In 2020, the budget has was about 10 trillion, and out of that budget, the borrowing what we borrowed to finance that budget was put at about 3.7, 3.3 trillion. Okay. That was what was borrowed. Borrowed money to finance the budget. The 2021 budget is worse off. We are going to borrow a minimum of uh, 5.02 trillion to finance the 2021 budget. In other words, we are borrowing the future of today's graduates and children because they have to pay this money. And if you know you are paying for the iniquities of your father, the iniquities you don't even know how this is come about, then you understand that you have a very daunting, um, difficult future ahead. And that is why we have to be, you have to create a new thing in mind. 
create a new thinking of who you are, create a new understanding of who you are, the personality that you carry. Sometime in 2010, a group of people under the auspices of um, the network decided to interview 91 human resources managers. And what was their objective? Their objective was to see how the present uh, graduates in the market are doing. And this is the statistic we have. 48% of employers still feel that the graduates have very poor concepts of creative thinking. 46%. Now, that today. 44% of employers think that the graduates are poor in self-awareness. And 36% of employers feel that they lack global and commercial awareness. And what is even very interesting is that we feel that we have poor emotional intelligence and we are poor in managing school life, school to work transition, school to work transition. And that is very important. I once had students and I asked, what do you do at upper graduation? Or why are you even in university? And again, the two one my father said, I am studying because my parents asked me to study. I would have preferred to be a hairdresser. And here she is, very brilliant girl, the two one graduates. And you see, this is the certificate we have. She has. She's not the certificate she's going to use after graduation. Unfortunately, I have not seen her after graduation. But I know this is serious to come across this group of people very often. And that is why we, we need to look at our educational system again, look at the way we give opportunities to our, kind, to our students. I'm thinking if I'm better, we find skills for every person and university student, polytechnic students, college of education students. Give them the opportunity to learn a skill, to learn something that they feel is their natural uh, talent. You might be in electrical and you feel you want to be a hairdresser. We give you the opportunity to go and learn hairdressing. Because you might along the line find something that connects electricity and hairdressing. And that will create the kind of revolution in, in, in the society. So we need to look at our educational system. We need to look at the way of retooling, reskilling every person that we have. Even after graduation, you have an opportunity to skill, to retool yourself so that you can you know, become a better person than what you are. It is very sad that this particular set of skills are basically lacking in most graduates. As usual, organizations spend valuable resources to train and retrain their employees in order to improve their performance. And that's what many organizations are saying that they don't want to have. They don't want to employ. Very sad, very, very sad. Because today, the unemployment rate has at 2020, end of 2020, was about 27%. Mm -hmm. That is from the start of the National Board of Statistics. Of course, those figures are a, a, a little bit higher. The unemployment, the, the underemployment rate is about 28.6% as at the end of 2020. What is very important in this people is that I have, we have statistics that shows that of these people, of the total people employed, the bulk of the employees are made up of people with secondary school certificates. In other words, those who graduate from the university, the bulk of them are still looking for jobs. And why? Because today, we seem to understand, you know, underplay the interpersonal skills that are required to be a very good uh, uh, and competitive person in the market. We seem to uh, you know, ignore it. The interpersonal skills necessary for day-to-day -day interactions. Many of our graduates cannot talk. If you ask them, how are you? They look at you and think a little bit to that respond or don't respond. That is not good enough. Open your mouth and talk. But don't talk stupid things. Because when you talk something very stupid, 
the first thing that I'm talking to immediately gives an assortment, immediately tally the value to the eye. So you must learn how to talk from the days. You must learn how to be critical thinkers. Think and think. You know, if you are looking for it, then you need to read well. You need to read more books. You need to understand what the other person is likely going to ask you. Develop your interpersonal skill. Develop, be interested in personal development. Don't wait for someone to train you. Have that mentality, I must train myself. It will cost money, yes. Don't buy that expensive mindset. Buy a lower one that will just receive, do the basic things you want. And spend the other money on your self-education, personal education. You need to have presentation skills. Be able to express yourself the way you want the person to understand you. And not, uh, uh, you have the person, you understand me. I don't need to ask you whether you understand when I speak. You should understand me from the very beginning. If I cannot communicate what I have in my, in my, in my faculty, it simply means that I have failed from the very beginning. You are not a leader when you cannot communicate. If you don't have the presentation skill, you are not a leader. You must seek to convince people. You must seek to let people focus their attention on you. Intentionally talk so that they understand you and not brushing everything. Through, as if it's not as if if you don't say it properly, the person will start thinking for you. He won't think for you. He will only read you and say this person is not serious, is not a leader. Remember figures. Always remember figures. I don't remember many names, but I remember people very well. So if you come to go and ask me the people you gave me yesterday, I will not really remember it. Because that is what you are going to use to reach me. So numeracy is very, very important. Understand and interpret people. Don't think for anybody. Use the people he has to tell that person you got it right or you got it wrong. In that case, he will not deny you. Get the entry street. Get the soft skills. Pay what you have to get the right skill. And that is what will define you in the long run. Our education needs help. Our educational system needs help. There are some very interesting statistics that we have here. And the talk of the type of problem we have depends on training that we have for our people. In 2020, the total people that enrolled for JAM was 1,949,983 enrolled as a for JAM. Of these people, 30% did not have five credits. Why did they waste their money when they know they don't have five credits? No, it is the hunger we have. It will be okay. God will do it. God doesn't do things that you are not prepared for. God will not bless you when you are spiritually not prepared for what you want to get. He won't bless you. So take time to prepare for things. Take time to know what you want. And of that one, 30% that eventually have their credit, only 30% will finally be admitted to the various special institutions, the university, the polytechnics, and monotechnics. And of that 30 percent, which is about 500 and something thousand, of that 500 and, 30, uh, 500 and something thousand that we enter the university, is very likely only 30, 40 percent of that applicants will definitely graduate from the university course. That is true, but at the same time, if you look at the employment figure, if you look at the employment figure, you will discover that the youth at the worst seats, the youth at the worst seats. Nigerian youth remains the hardest seat by unemployment with over 13.9 million people. That's between the age of 15 and 34. The data also shows that about 7.6 percent do not have any means, if nothing, to upgrade or retool or rebrand of those unemployed people. They just sit down, I have no job, no job, no job. They keep telling themselves no job and they are not ready to do anything for themselves. 
candidates with postgraduate combined makes up about 2.9 million out of that 30, uh, 30, about 14 million people uh, uh, and the youth markets. And very interesting, surprisingly, out of the 35.5 million Nigerians that are fully employed, that was the figure that was trying to put together, out of the 35.5 million Nigerians that are fully employed, 28.8 million never attended school. Never attended school. That is the problem that we have. A huge army of people that have nothing to do. We have not, we don't have provision for them to enter vocational school. We don't have provision for them to learn the trade. We focus on the higher education. And higher education does not take in more than 100, maybe 120. That's the university, for example. It can't take in more than 100 uh, uh, candidates every year for the 100 level. So you find there's a huge army of unemployed. And that is what we have used for, for all these years that we have. In the nation, we have not focused enough. The era of our free education is long gone, and we have people who need to feed themselves. Unfortunately, we have not made the provision for them to feed themselves. Nigeria is less, this is a very poor nation. Nigeria is a very poor nation. Statistics show that, let me just do a comparative analysis. Last year, the government spent 108 billion on COVID. The American government, when by the day, spent 1.9 trillion on COVID. That was the first budget impact. 1.9 trillion. That is about 10 times, or more than 10 times, what we spent on COVID. And that is, in fact, it's about four times bigger than the entire budget that we have in 2019 of 13.9 multiplied by divided by about 499 trillion, we find that we are relatively a very, very poor nation. So our, our, our children, the graduates today must understand they have the role to play. They have a very big role to play to change these steps that we are creating for them and to understand that they cannot continue to use the same slogan that we are used to, the older generation are used to, saying that Nigeria is bad, Nigeria is bad, nothing is working. Don't use that language again if you want to understand where you are going to see better, create a better vision for yourself. And tell yourself it doesn't matter how it looks like, tomorrow is great. You can work hard, you can determine, create a new vision for yourself. So, in Korea, we are created by an act of parliament, our functions are well defined to regulate engineering education, regulate engineering practice in all aspects and education. I wouldn't want to go into the entire activity of Korea, but suffice it to say we have the, an engineering regulation monitoring department. We have a registration department created by us. We have the disciplinary tribunal and investigation panel. We have issues that allow us to become better people. Unfortunately, I want to give you a very interesting statistic. Sorry, it's not showing very well, but I will take time to explain what is there. In 2016, the total registration we had was about 4,465. In 2020, because of COVID, we had 3,778. Total, we have registered between 2016 and 2020 is about 26,596. In other words, that those are the engineers we have registered. From inception, we have registered about 56,000 engineers. And the question is, is that the only people that are in Nigeria, no. Very people don't see the importance of registration. Very, very important 
if in this city that shows the different kinds of engineers, engineering personnel that we have, and we discover that the uh, people still focus on getting themselves registered as engineers. 55% of the total registration of themselves are engineers. And you find that the engineering technologists, the engineering technicians, and the engineering staff men are practically not registered. Why? Again, the type of psyche we have developed in the society. Everything is imparted. Everything is imparted. We think completely opposite of what we need for development. The craft men still remain the bedrock of development. The craft, the, the technologies, the technicians, we need them. They define development. They define the creativity of the society after the engineers have designed. But unfortunately, they are the most neglected group of people that we can have. And you can see their percentage is very, very low. But the total people registered as engineers, the, 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 the engineers are 10 times higher than the technologies. They are 60 times higher than the technicians, and they are 20 times higher than the craftsmen. If we look at the registration of companies also, we also need there's something there for us to rejoice about. People are not registered as companies. The companies are not registered. And again, how do we compete in the global markets if you don't have the registration that you require? Guidance, whatever you do, make sure it is registered. We have lost every, practically every of our products to foreign registration. The other day, they showed me a, 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 a drink in Canada called Zobo Juice. It's double ring, can and it's sold in Canada under the trade name of Zobo. Zobo is a local link in the north. And I'm very sure if you look at our southwest, look at the things we have, we will discover that most of our products have been patented overseas and we don't even have the proprietary rights over those things. In other words, we have lost the revenue we're supposed to generate from those products. Let us not take registration for granted. Because at the end of the day, that is what defines us. Tourism is critical, but our war has always been a household name for those of us in those states. Because of certain things we are known for. But I'm not sure any of those things are registered and made into a trade. That is the beginning of losing the entire revenue due to our locality. So we need to look at these things. Things don't just happen. We have to create the type of thing. We have to create the type of future that we desire. In Korea, we are looking at how disruption, how this disruption of the fourth digital age would look like. There's going to be serious disruption. We have already said it. Government will change, education will change, the way we do things will change. And if we don't have the right education, the right skill to drive the fourth industrial revolution, then definitely we are not going anywhere. And that's why today we are talking more of the outcome-based learning, outcome-based and performance-based learning. We must have an educational system that is intentionally developed, intentionally programmed to promote skill, all-around skill, professionalism of the graduates, not so that we can this the diversified global demands of the 21st century. The things are going to change. Today we need people who are creative, that can solve complex problems, people who are committed to life learning, people that have above average communication skills, that are abreast with technological development, that are flexible and able to participate in managerial processes that have good decision making and can work interactively. Most of these things are not taught in the university. They are spiritual. Sorry for using that word. You need that push internally, that compassion to change where you are most true from within. You must be, be spiritual enough to pour the character you desire to change where you are. As a person. Today's job requires specific planning 
all learning activities in the university must not be towards what the teacher wants, but what you can do in the society. Teaching must have a new concept of not just giving principles, but giving principles that can help develop a change or improve the process, the products that the society requires. So this is where we are today. Within job environment, by specific learning, all learning activities teaching must be towards not what the teacher is looking for. We have to create a new understanding. If I teach speech transfer, I must understand how the woman is talking with firewood outside. I must be able to relate it to it and be able to say no, I can improve on how to eat and cook at home. We need to restructure our education. So what we are saying about the outcome based learning is that the outcome based learning starts from products. Starts from products and from the product we define how we are going to teach. From product we know how we are going to teach. We need to teach things that society wants and not things that we want. Schematically, this is what we mean by outcome based learning. It is a learning that is the society focus. It's a learning that definitely has questions from the program education objective, which is the topic of this uh, presentation. We must have a university program education outcome that is relevant to anyone that goes through the system, that continuously improves itself based on the feedback from the guidelines, based on the feedback from the society, based on the feedback of the employer, based on the government changing policies. Otherwise, we have people who come out of the educational system and are not addressed with the change that they are going to meet in society. So, before an educational system, is said to be based on outcome, stakeholders must establish a clear framework of learning that the students will be able to master successfully at the cumulative point of their school, of their school career, at the exit point. We must know what they expect at the exit. We must know what they expect and teach them. If I know the society needs artificial intelligent people, my program must build artificial intelligence into all the courses that I teach in the university. A lawyer must understand artificial intelligence in order for me to go to navigate the serious complexities of modern cases. A sociology must understand the complexity of societal disruption that have completely changed the mentality of our people. Having skill is good. But having those hindsight of what, how you are going to do things is very, very important and more important. And those are the things we always talk about when we say we, we must be spiritual, we must be able to develop the love we have for the things that we do. OBE have a more direct and rational curriculum in terms of responsiveness to the society and national, to national needs. The focus of the students must be that to develop their thoughts, to develop what they want by the principles they have taught. Know the principle, know the product. If the principle is not good enough, pick another principle or failure. Try to, for you to be employable, you must be multifaceted in thinking, multifaceted in understanding. Because the society will not buy a product that increases cost, that doesn't have the right appearance, that doesn't have the right you know, attractiveness for it to buy. Someone must recommend your product, and he can only recommend it when he understands that the product is good enough. In fact, how many of us have gone to the market and bought a product only to take it home and say, oh, I don't need this product? It has happened to many of us. It's not because we didn't need that product. The marketers need to sell and they have packaged it in a way that you cannot say no. You just buy it, take it to okay, I will give it to the next person. And of course, they are taking your money. So you need to think a little bit better. And 
for you to get people to buy things they don't need from you, and definitely the next session will take and it will be better off for you in the society. Learning is becoming more complex. Trading, entrepreneurship is becoming more IT based. It's more of psychology. It's more of philosophy. It's statements. It's more of law. That is why if you buy a product now, you find a needless attached to it. That needless binds you like an evil. It binds you with all the evils of that product so that you don't come back and say, I want to return this product. You can't return it because it's dead. You have read it. Even if you don't read it, it doesn't matter. It's an agreement to enter into. Just taking it and taking that later. Buy it, the antithesis, the account and condition to you. Terms and condition apply. Pay your money and that principle becomes operational to enforce the rights of the people. We need new thinking, new thinking. We need new understanding so that we don't just continue to run mild as if all is well. All is no longer well. Things have changed. And that's why the learning we need these days must focus on knowledge, must focus on skill, psychology, the psychomotors, the practicals, and the technical aspect of it. It's not just enough, it's not good enough to say, I, I have the knowledge. No, the knowledge must be rated. The concept and the principle of the scientific foundation, the application of that knowledge to solve related problems, seeking and using new knowledge to adapt to change. Every domain has specific function, has specific questions that must be answered. And that is what we are asking you to understand today in this lecture. Go through what we have, and you understand that it is no longer business as usual. It's no longer business as usual. You must be systematic in developing skills. You must be systematic in knowing that the use of evidence has changed. The other day we had a denying this uh, tribunal. And the lawyers came in and stopped the entire process. Why? Evidence based is not just an issue of this is the paper. This is the paper. He signed this thing. That is not good enough again. Evidence based, we are creating new thoughts. Create new thoughts. Understand what is required in anything you do. Take the pain to understand so that you don't lose whatever you have purely on primordial technical grounds. Because the other person is not coming to play with you. He's coming to fight. He's coming to compete with what you have. Social responsiveness and responsibility. Capacity building for sustainable livelihood. If you don't want to be a slave, learn more. Learn more. Respecting cultural differences. Finding opportunities in building skills. If you are in a world, as my vice chancellor said, uh, he said, Edo and a world have the same cultural uh, heritage. And it's true. My, for no more for most, you are wearing this, which my traditional rulers also wear, cultural responsiveness. If you leave this place and think you can run to another place, ignoring your culture, you will end up in deep trouble. And you even know what that trouble is. That is the unfortunate thing. Because you refuse to understand the cultural differences in developing the products that you carry, in developing the character that you carry. So, you can see that today is a different thing. It's a different thing because the society is changing. We have new understanding of professionalism, new understanding of value, new understanding of ethics, attitude that we carry when we go to any place. If you cannot understand that the, your, your right stops where the other person begins, then you are in deep trouble because we do this and the litigation that will come out of it will swallow you up. These are issues learning has to look at. Critical thinking, scientific approach in the way we do things, communication and teamwork. These are new ways that must be built into every curriculum that we have. Management and 
entrepreneurial skills. You see, when they don't be cool that you graduated with two one or first class or third class, these are certificates. They are not what you are going to be outside. If your understanding, your character is not built to understand the complexity of the new order that we are in. Oftentimes, those with low grades have better exposure of the better understanding of the society than those with high grades. Because those with high grades spend so much time with the book and they forgot that they're supposed to look sideways to see what the other person is doing, to see how the other person is behaving. So they have good grades, but one with the third class has a better societal appreciation. So today I want to challenge every high flying graduate here today. Don't play into the hands of foolishness. Let your character try to do them. You have high skills, you have high ability, good brain, good mental development, but it's not enough. It's not enough to live in the world that we are in today. Professional is changing, values are changing. Critical thinking that we know embraces every single layer of human development in developing professionalism. So you need new skills, new, new entrepreneurial uh, skills, and very importantly, life not learning and information management. You need it. You need to understand every day you ask yourself question, what have I done today? Every day I ask myself, I tell myself a few things. How do I improve myself? How do I change the character that I have today so that I can become a better person? Of course, it comes with confrontation. It comes with, you no, know, at times open conflicts. But don't change your principles. Don't change your belief. Don't be swallowed up by what the society, what, what the majority wants to say. Don't be swallowed up by this. Refuse to be swallowed up by the, the fact that management said this and that. If you have any designing opinion, don't be afraid to say it. Today they will criticize you, but tomorrow they will call you back when the truth is open. Then they will appreciate you. Then they will say, yes, we need this person for this position. If after five years of graduation, as we like to say in the program, education of thirty, if after five years we come to evaluate you as a person, what will we be saying? We will see you as someone who has been able to imbibe the principles he believed in. Or we will see you as someone who has completely relegated, neglected, and sold the, the basic principles that define the character and personality. These are questions you must continue to ask yourself. A program education objective must address things after we have graduated. And if we know that in a few years' time, all the courses we read in the university will become the instrument with which we will be defining ourselves in the society, then we will know we have to do things a little bit better, a little bit with understanding, a little bit with the type of skill, the professionalism, the character that is required to have a better person. And that person, that person does not come from the university training, it comes from the lifelong learning process that you now subject yourself to. The principles you now imbibe within you to define the way you interact with people, the way you see things, the way you talk, the way you practice your professional skill. It is very important we appreciate the fact that we did not come to the university just to study, we came to the university to be able to do the type of things that we are supposed to do when we graduate. Brother, we need to hold some personal beliefs. And I have taken time to write a few of them down because I feel belief is still what defines us. Our belief is what defines us. Our belief is what gives us that character, that boldness, to challenge the way things work out. Our belief is what defines us. So tomorrow begins tomorrow. Tomorrow is the beginning of your 
post life complication. After you are officially given your certificate. That is the beginning of your tomorrow. And what you do with it, a lot depends on the way you have to understand it to pursue life. There is nothing like failure. Don't be afraid when you have difficult times. Don't be afraid when people say it's not going to work. No, there is nothing like failure. It's in the mind. I don't think the pro chancellor understood the entire complexity of the problem is going through today in you know, the establishing a Chivas University. But he had the belief and he had faith. That is the definition. That is the attribute you need to live life. You will ask me, do I have one? Of course, mine is not as big as that of the pro chancellor, but I also believe in certain things and I push certain goals. Yes. Often times we see uh, the, 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 the important society we live in. We see the way people call us things and those things. Don't worry, don't focus on those things. They are only challenging you to do things in a better way. See the beauty of the results that you are looking for. The Bible says that even when he was reproached, even when he was on the cross, he did not look at those cross. He saw the glory that was set ahead of him. That is Jesus. See the glory ahead of you and live for those glory and work for those glory and definitely the sky will be the limits. We are created to bring solutions. Forget about what people think. In fact, about you. One thing is very important. If I want to eat today, you give me food. I won't ask you who cooked that food. Perhaps when I finish the food, I will ask you who cooked the food. Why? Because people are looking for good food. They will buy your products, not because you are a religious person, you are a Muslim, or Christian, or a, 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 a non-believer. No! They will buy it because of the quality of their product. And after they have bought it, they will never mention your religion. They will never mention credit comfort. But they have given you the money and the goods. That is how life is. So forget about all these things that people are today fighting over. They are not the key. The key is the character and the personality that you carry. So I want to tell you once more, go for who you are. Go for the personality that God has given you and use that personality to the glory of God, to the glory of the community, to the glory of the whole you came from. And finally, I want to appreciate everyone First of all, the Almighty God who has given us the grace to be here today, to participate in what we are doing today. I want to appreciate the Almighty God for that. All glory and honor be to His holy name, is the one that has called us and given us His glory. I also want to uh, say thank you to the Chancellor, right now, the Chancellor, the Board of Trustee of the University Chair, Professor of Universities, Professor David, and here, uh, the Kedaya, the son, the Government Council, under the Chairmanship of the Co Chancellor, my very amiable, honorable Dr. Kode, the Chairman Day. I want to thank you very much. I want to thank the Vice Chancellor also for the great help and assistance you are giving to us and the university for making things work today. I'm not mindful of the entire staff and students of the five colleges of, of this great university. I want to thank you, the graduates, for being here and giving me the opportunity to address you. The army man of this university, I want to say thank you very much. My my application also goes to the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, the President for his support, and the entire staff. I have more than close to 30 staff members who came for this thing. I want to say thank you very much. And also to the doctors to my wife, my children that have given me all the support. I am a very stubborn person at times. I want to say thank you for bearing all my bearing with all the things that I do that you don't appreciate. My first love, my mom, 
she has been my back door. Then I told her I was coming here to say she, in fact, I want to appreciate the full chances of When I told her my about my mom, she said she would create a space for her. And we did sign. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. I completed your message today and I told them to tell me what you said. That's why we are here. I want to thank you very much, sir. It's a privilege for me to have you here. And I pray that you see more of things like this. I also want to thank the Vice Chancellor of my university, Federal University of Technology, although he's not here. I want to thank him for the leave of absence and enjoying with this. And of course, I want to thank especially the Royal Highness, the Obas, that are here. My sister, Thank you for this thing. Um, of course, to my friends, to my dosage, all over the nation, across the river, um, from uh, Delta, I want to say thank you very much. And of course, to those who criticize me, I am not your enemy at all. I love you. And I thank you for the criticism. I appreciate everything. I love you all. God bless all of us. Thank you. A standing ovation for the guest speaker, the Adam Justice, for the top. Thank you very much, sir. Very grateful. Let us be seated. The next thing on the agenda is comments, questions for our guest lecture. We, because of our time, we are limiting the questions to three. Comments, three. Three questions, three comments. Professor Faye. Stop for one. I'd like to thank the guest speaker for his contribution to knowledge this year. Uh, it is true for all the presented lives, all the friends, the problem in the world. And it is this is for all the conflict that we have across the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Then you also pointed to the fact that there is a gap between the knowledge required in industry and the content of education doled out to students in teaching in various institutions. Sir, so, I want to request that. All regulatory agencies who are also stakeholders in reducing unemployment in Nigeria should come together and look for a way to reach NUC, National Board for Technical Education, so that we can review curriculum regularly at a technical base, so that we can come out with skills that can find application in society, provide opportunities and meet the need of the people. I want to thank you for your contribution. Yes. Any other question? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Dele Amodu. I'm a friend of the, of the university. Uh, Professor, I want to thank you for this lecture. Accurately and precisely delivered, dissected, multifaceted. Uh, the, my comment is like climbing on what the professor that just spoke just said. I like the idea that you are actually talking about a rigid, a mindset 
reset. To reset a system that is almost awkward. And that you were saying actually has to do with getting the key. That has to do with interpersonal, some kind of psyche over psyche over all. What I just want to say is that it has to do with curriculum overhaul. Because the emphasis is too much on certificates, certificates like paper recognition. In other times, if you are to be employed, into, a, into any end job. All they just require of you is certificate from any profession. Finally, I just want to say, since you are talking about the intuition, the awakening that is required, I can see a link between you and this, uni this university. The Ashifa University is what they have because of the place of God. I was at the uh, commission. I saw the place of God. I saw the premium, the place of God. You said it, sir. But you played it down. Because maybe because of <laughs> what people would be saying about the spirituality. So when you are talking about emotions, spirituality, whatever, please, let it get to those that are, that we need to add it even in the curriculum so that we can now can move on. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Yes. 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 Come on, last one. Thank you very much. I want to salute the outstanding knowledge of the lecturer today. I pray God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. What I want to say is just an encouragement to this generation. You have made us to realize that what we learn in academic settings alone cannot put us in a position to help the society. What we need to convert our vision and have that creativity inside in order to convert whatever we have learned in academic to the reality need of the society. And I want to say that there is something I get wondering about. I want to cite Dr. Ayoride as an example. If it is just for what he has learned as a lawyer, we wouldn't have all these things that we are having today. But whatever we are having today has been a product of his vision, his creativity lifestyle. And that has made him put him in a position, even as a doctor, to hire and fire professors. I pray God will continue to be your strength. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm from two thousand years. My name is Mrs. Kavivian Munara, and I'm one of the school. I'm one of the graduating students. People exactly. Yes, like what I want to ask has been um, elaborated. It has been well discussed. Then um, Professor Kaye also spoke on what I wanted to speak on. Despite that. I want to ask, like, you talk about um, outcome-based education, which ordinarily it is not about the student, it's about the lecturer and the school. If we as students and in the, in the, in the institution learn, maybe an engineering department or business uh, management department, and we learn it based on what the curriculum of the school is all about. How then do we want to stand 
out and become self-employed or we can stand on our own without using the certificate. That one is wrong. Then secondly, in every institution, let the truth be told, we are uh, CGPA certificate-oriented. What we can write and have, and most of students are all certificate-based. Let me come talk in this class. As much as we want to come out there and um, impact in the, in the society and the game and employ, we still want to talk the class. As you rightly said, sir, that most of the top graduating students have all, you don't use the word, but what it means to me, book war. We take the book, and others who are not highly like that in their CGPA look around too. Is this really encouraging that the students should really concentrate in order to help talk all what they are having so that you can just know what you will do in society? I know that not what you mean, but I'm just trying to clarify it. So please, my own contribution there is that the school, the lecturer, the company board, and the, I don't know the name they call, should please let this be inculcated in the curriculum that it should be outcome based, goal based. What do I want to become in future? Do I want to become an engineer? Do I want to be self-employed? Do I want to own my own company? Do I want to be a producer? So let it be what we will start now. Not after spending four years, five years, you now go back and start to tell me again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's now time for the guest to come to the I, I will start from the last speaker. What we preach to outcome based is not issue entirely of curriculum, but using the curriculum principle as it is now to relate to specific profession, specific product. If I am teaching communication skill, for example, in language, what is communication skill in the society? How do I communicate what they are asking me to do now in the society? In other words, I'm looking at the basic principles of communication skill relative to society needs. If I'm teaching heat transfer, I want to relate heat transfer to how a top form is produced. I want to tell the students, you see, this heat we are talking, the amount of heat I need is not something I have to be so inventive about. But if I miss it, I miss everything. I want everything. If I don't have the right snow, the, the, the right knowledge of it. It simply means I will go for high cost it to go for. Instead of going for something that is lesser, we are trying no electricity. But there are other avenues of electricity. What makes one different from the other? How can base wants you as a person to see cost, to see government change, to see legislation, to see things that are likely going to happen because you don't have knowledge. That is what Atom Green is preaching about. So we are asking the teacher now. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have problems with teachers to the right of standing. That is also there. But we are trying to train the teachers. We'll be holding a lot of seminars along the line to tell our lecturers what is Atom Green's learning. It's not completely a complete throw away of the curriculum that we have now. But using the curriculum to develop new way of teaching, new understanding, where the student themselves will be the center, not the lecturer. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. You are not, you, the knowledge you have now is not a waste. That is why when you go outside Nigeria, graduates of our university don't fail. 
They don't fail because they have enough theoretical knowledge in them. But theory is not the issue. The society is the issue. The acceptance in the society is the issue. If you work on theory, you will get the lawyers pursuing you every day with education because you don't understand. The sustainability of the knowledge and society will be one of us. So that is what we are trying to preach in our own days. The certificate is relevant, but the truth is that certificate does not give you anything. CGPA does not give you anything. Of course, you can write uh, employment, or you put your pregnancy and say you have the lowest CGPA, you need not apply. That is why you need a minimum pass that is required by the society. But when, once you enter that job, it is no longer certificate. It's not competence. It's not spirituality. The, 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 the things that raise in your head when you wake up in the morning, your ability to create, to define, to solve problems that the society, your company has. The creative thinking you put into it, that is what matters once you are inside the system. And of course, and employees don't think for their companies. So they like the material skill. And when the, the, the position vacancy, you see the employer looking for someone outside. Why? Because those inside have not shown the desired competence. Again, they don't understand. That's why we are telling you today. Get this understanding. Read why. Read the, the interdisciplinary thing. If you are teaching in physics, go and learn what is chemistry. Go and learn what is biology. Because there is molecular physics. There is molecular uh, biology. There is biotechnology in engineering. And if you don't have this competence and you say, I'm only, I only understand the why the one mathematics and all the rest of them, you have failed. You have failed. And that is what we are trying to drive at. We need to understand, get a better understanding. We are not afraid to speak spirituality. We are not, I'm not afraid to speak spirituality. And I, 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 I'm not afraid to say I will do it every day. Because that is the root of whatever I do. That is what gives me the ability to speak. That's what gives me the type of things that I do. And I'm not, I'm not ashamed of the gospel at all, at all, at all. Uh, I also want to say, come and ask the coming together of the regulation body. A few months ago, we wrote, I, was, I wrote the Ministry of Education, the of Education, on selling the OBD to all the engineering institutions, colleges of education, uh, MBTD, and the NUC. And the minister graciously consulted the committee of those bodies to look at this particular issue. Well, unfortunately, we are still with it. Maybe we will inaugurate it tomorrow, and if we do, that will be the beginning of a lot of, you know, talking, cooperation, and trying to sell some of these ideas down the passage down the line. But we don't have choice over the introduction of outcome-based learning, performance-based learning in our educational system. We don't have that choice. Time is going to demand that we do this. Because the cost of not doing this will be too high for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have ended the, the question and comment session. Sorry, because of our time. Before I call on the process of all for this closing remark, let me quickly recognize the following people. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Ajaka. Council member to our next. The Registrar of uh, Medical Laboratory Science Council is with us, Dr. Tusa Iriabo. We also have Engineer Ezekiel Ogor Mutola, Chairman of the Grand Society of Engineers of Pure Branch. We are welcome. Sir. We have the following high sheet who accompany the our ABC to this place. High sheet, Alakao, Ogun, Malaba, Alakao. 
your brother or your classmate becomes the Minister of Labor, Employment and Productivity. And he said, okay, oh, this is our chance to go and get you. And then they said, no, you are not getting lost. That's why if you go for any time, you have your own. <laughs> Today, by the grace of God, and the chairman of Camp School of Ajiba Students, this morning I approved 15 employment. But let me tell you, nobody is a member of my family. Perhaps they don't have a certificate. If you are looking for a lecturer in engineering and you are my brother, born by my mother next to me, and you are not an engineer, you need to prepare for the opportunity. So first and foremost, let us go for the certificate, good grade, and wait for the opportunity. There shall be a turnaround and the opportunity will come. If it doesn't come, you wait for what I call the grace of God, which passes all human understanding to fix my students. So, as you are graduating, hold on to your integrity. Character makes a man. After the certificate, if I want the certificate, if you have the certificate, you have first class, you have master, you have PhD, and you don't have the minimum name of Achievers University, which is integrity, no character, you are your own. If you get the job, it won't last. So as you go, don't be afraid. You are prepared for opportunity, and by the grace of Almighty God, the opportunity will come. Yeah. On this note, I had my closing remarks because I want to go for cocktail. Thank you. A round of applause for the closing fellow. Thank you very much, sir. It is my pleasure to now invite Professor Rifuoma to give the vote of thanks. Professor Rifuoma. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the Council of Achibak University, the management, the staff and students, and indeed the entire Achibak community, we wish to say thank you to the Almighty God who has made today possible for us. We also want to thank all of our distinguished persons who has raised today's occasion. We must specially thank His Imperial Majesty, the Allah of all. We appreciate you, Baba. We say, happy to see you, sir. We also appreciate all of the Royal Majesties who are also here. We say, thank you for coming. We appreciate all of the friends of Achievers University, all of those who are supporting and making our dreams to come true. And we also want to appreciate even the students too, who are making all of this work the one. It is because of them that we are here and that we are celebrating today and tomorrow and even the days to come. So lastly, we want to say thank you to every one of us. We appreciate every one of us for your time, for your contribution, and for making today memorable for us. To say thank you very much, and our prayers are that God also will continue to make us to have things to celebrate in our personal life. And for those who have traveled from, from far and near, we also pray that God will grant all of us joining us back to our places where we have come from. Once again, we say thank you, everybody. And of applause for me. Thank you very much, Professor Rodrigo. It's my pleasure to invite once again Governor Rico Kumblafe to come and give us this closing prayer. Shall we rise for prayer? Heavenly Father, we are full of gratitude for all that you have enabled us to do today. We have come to your presence at the end of this program. We thank you for all that you have used to minister to us. And we thank you, Lord, 
for this establishment that you have made to be progressive year in year out. We thank you for the graduating students for this year. We thank you for all the guests that have come. You have granted unto them jolly mercies, as we also believe in you that we lead them back safely. We thank you for our RTAC because great thing is happening in its own lifetime and better things will continue to happen. May your name forever be praised in Jesus' name. Mighty Father, as we depart from this auditorium, we ask the remaining program for today we commit into your hands that you will lead us and guide us alive through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We equally pray for the remaining program tomorrow. And Lord, we ask that you will bless the program. As we prepare ahead, you will prepare ahead of us. All this we ask in this Trinity Auditorium. In the name of the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. The university is at. The university is at. Thank you. 